Hey, so I want to look into this paper, which is why is A2C a special case of PPO? Uh, so it's a pretty short paper, uh, but I think it's very instructive for, um, I don't think it's finished. I think it's very instructive for learning PPO. I mean, I found it very instructive for learning PPO. There were things I didn't understand about PPO, I read lots and lots blogs and videos and stuff and they just kept saying the same thing over again and then this made some things clear to me which were not otherwise clear um so where to start so there's some errors in this paper but that's fine because like the overall concept of the paper i found was really really useful for understanding ppo um so what they're doing is they're showing that atc is actually a special case of ppo i mean that's what the title says right um now this is kind of i think this is wrong I think that the objective function for ATC should be the expectation of the advantage. There shouldn't be any log pi theta here. I think this is, they're basically writing the derivative, but that's fine. Um, and then they've got the objective function for a PPO. Now, I imagine you've already watched tons of PPO videos because I'm not very, I'm not famous. <laughs> so if you've got to my video, you've probably already watched tons. So you've probably seen this formula before um so anyway so we'll go through it so expectation so um this rt is not reward it's a ratio of uh this policy pi theta and then this mysterious thing pi theta old which we'll talk more about in a sec i think this is a mistake this should not be at here because the at is inside here and then as you've probably seen like we clip this so that the rt basically can't go more than typically like 20% away from one. So it can go up to like 1.2 or down to 0 0.8. Um, and we clip it using this min and this clip. Um, and all right, so it's saying that these appear to be drastically different. Well, no, they don't if you fix this, but I still think it's instructive. Right, now they're pointing out that RT is one when pi theta equal pi theta old. Now, and they explain when pi theta will equal pi theta old. So, but like, why don't we talk about that? Why would pi theta equal pi theta old? What is this pi theta old anyway? So like, when I looked at it, I was assuming it was like the pi theta old before, I don't know, before we did the bat prop or something, which is sort of true, but misses some steps. So let's have a look at PPO. Uh, so I've made like a slide here for PPO. So, there's two parts to PPO. There's the rollout stage where we're playing in the new environment or the, the agent is playing in the environment. And then there's the learning stage where the agent is not playing, especially if it's dino and he dies. Uh, but the, here the agent is learning. Uh, so the, the agent comprises two neural networks. Uh, there's the, the value neural network to predict the value of a state. And then there's the policy in your network, which is going to decide what action to take, like predict what action, but like decide what action. Um, and both of those are going to learn during the learning stage. During the rollout stage, we're going to run a whole bunch of steps. Now, by default, the open AI PPO2 algorithm add, also the stable baseline 3 PPO algorithm end step is 2048. So they're going to take 2048 steps in the environment. This will probably involve like if it's an episodic environment, this will probably involve multiple episodes and that's fine. It will just carry on, reset the episode and keep collecting states. Um, so during this rollout, basically we're going to take a state from the environment, pass that through the policy network, which is going to decide what actions to take. Take that action, the environment will give us a reward and a new state. And we're basically going to, we're going to record into the rollout buffer like that state the log of the probabilities from the policy network, like that's the network that decides the action, uh, the reward, and probably the next state, although I'm not completely clear about that, but I haven't checked. Um, those will go into the rollout buffer. Um, so we're calling the policy network once per step, um, and those could go into the rollout buffer. Now we get to the learning stage, and now this is where PPO and A2C differ somewhat. So in the learning stage, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the each step in the rollout buffer, and we're going to learn from that. And so 
A2C, as we'll see in a moment, is going to take this entire buffer and it's going to run that as a single giant batch for one epoch of learning. The PPO is going to split this all up buffer into mini batches. It's going to shuffle the steps within the buffer and then it's going to split them into mini batches and then it's going to iterate over the mini batches running the learning. And then once it's iterated over the mini batches for the roller buffer once, it's going to do that several more times for several epochs. The exact number of epochs is a, is a hyperparameter. So a lot of batches, a lot of mini batches to run through the whole roller buffer, and then even more to run through multiple epochs. A to C, on the other hand, also has a roller stage, also has a roller buffer. This doesn't really differ from the PPO at all. In the learning stage, it just does a single epoch with a single giant batch. But of course, the PPO, we could param parameterize it to use also the number of mini batches is one and the number of epochs is one, which would make it identical to ATC. So this is an example of how ATC is a special case of PPO. Now, one other difference, which I'm sure you're thinking about is, oh, don't we have, whoops, don't we have the clipping thing, right? We've got this clipping thing, right? And we've got, and what is this pi theta of? Right, yeah, we were going to explain what is this pi theta of. So, all right, so I've written here, in the rollout stage, params equal theta odd. So during the rollout stage, the parameters, this is the parameters of the policy network, which is deciding the actions. This is not changing. I mean, we've also got some parameters for value, but either way, neither of those parameters are changing. Well, running, running the rollout, there's no learning to take place, and the theta is fixed. Then we go to the learning stage and written here, input parameters equal theta old, output parameters equal theta. Right now this is kind of loose, this output parameters equal theta. The input parameters is certainly theta old. Right now what is going to happen is this input parameters equal theta old, we're going to give that to the very first mini batch. And we're going to run a forward pass over a batch of steps from the rollout buffer. And then we're going to run a backward pass using the PPO loss. That's going to back propagate onto the parameters, which are now no longer theta old. Right, so our parameters in our policy network have changed from being theta old to being some new set of parameters. Now, what that means is the parameters for the next mini batch are not the parameters that we used when we were making the rollout buffer. This means we need to use off policy learner. For the very first mini batch, the parameters that we are running through the network for learning are identical to the parameters we used during the rollout. For the second mini batch and for every other mini batch for the rest of this learning stage, the parameters have changed and they're no longer theta old. So we need to use uh, offline learning. But for the first mini batch, theta equal theta old, the parameters in the policy equal theta old. So if we had a single mini, a single giant batch for a single epoch, actually theta would equal theta old. Now, if we look at the paper, then, well, basically that means that this RT theta, which is the ratio of theta, old, theta and theta old will become one, right? And the clip will drop out because the ratio is one. So there's no point in clipping. So we don't need this clipping anymore. The clip completely vanishes, the min vanishes, and we're basically left with the expectation of AT, which is basically exactly what this would be if it wasn't if it was written correctly. This would be the expectation of AT. Now they then go on to show if you take the gradient of this and then you substitute the pi theta equal pi theta old you also get a gradient which also matches this, which I thought was instructive. So uh, let, let's go through that. So we're going to start with, we're not going to, let's get rid of the min and the clipping. And we're just going to start with the expectation of this ratio um, and then the advantage for t. Expectation of t of the ratio in AT. Now I'm going to call this ratio VT. No one else does. Everyone else calls it RT, but because in RT, because in my mind, RT sounds like reward, and I use RT for reward, I'm going to use a different letter. I'm going to use VT. Okay. So 
we have an objective function, which is the PPO objective function, uh, which is a function of theta. And this is equal to the expectation of, um, so we've got the, the hat A, which is the advantage. And then we've got this ratio of um, pi of, so this is the probability of an action given a state. Well, I mean, probability distribution over actions given a particular state. And we're dividing this by uh, the pi old, um, I just put in a define, uh, which is here. Let's also replace this with mid. Uh, okay, I can't spell frac. Uh, what are pi old, right? Uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, well, I got to, yeah, there we go. All right, uh, okay, and it's the expectation over t. All right, so what does this expectation mean? So it means like if we sample many steps, like an infinite number of steps, uh, and each of those number of steps is going to have like different states and actions and advantage. Uh, if we average out this term over all of those steps, then we're going to get a scalar, and that is the objective. It's the expected value like all over like an infinite number of steps. So that's the objective term. And now we need to differentiate it. So we're going to do like nabla theta. All right, so, so we're, going to do, we're going to kind of take the derivative of the JPPO. So we're going to do nabla theta of, and then let's just copy this because we'll have to write it all out. And then this nabla theta is also have to go over here to your right. So we've got this. Right, now this expectation, so all right, so the explanation I'm going to give here is going to be a little bit of hand-waving. My maths is not going to be rigorously correct or even close to it, but at least it's going to like step through the main results. There's plenty of resources out there to get like more exact. So basically this expectation, um, we're doing expectation over t, but Really, but we can also think of this as an expectation over states and actions. So we're sampling states and actions, and this is where I'm going to get hand waving. I'm going to say we're just sampling it from a policy, and that policy is uh, quite old. Right now, this is a little bit loose and hand waving because the action certainly is sampled from this policy. But the states is what it sampled is from is the stable distribution of states if you ran pi old for a while. So this these are being sampled from a distribution which is a function of pi old, but it's not actually technically being sampled from pi old. It's sampled from a, a stable distribution of states, which it is the stable distribution you'll get if you run pi old forever. But for Brevity, I'm just going to write it like this, that we're sampling ST and AT from pi old, which is sort of almost true. Right, now, this nabla theta, there's nothing in this expectation about theta. We've only got the theta old, because this, oh, before we, let's back up a sec. This, uh, this pi is a function of theta. And this pi old is a function of theta old. So I also did a death. All right, and then let's add that in here too, and here. All right, and here. Because uh, this is kind of where we want to we can't start wanting it. Right, we're taking the derivative with respect to theta, not theta old. So the expectation itself doesn't involve theta, therefore we can just stick the nabla inside the expectation. If this was over theta, sorry, over pi, well, pi or theta, we wouldn't be able to just stick the nabla inside. But since this is over pi old, which has nothing to do with theta, we can just stick the nabla inside. And then if we look inside, the pi, yeah, so we're definitely going to have to take the derivative of this pi. This pi old, nothing to do with theta. So it's just a constant. And this advantage, 
So the advantage is the reward minus the um, baseline, which is the value of the current state. The value of the current state was the I. What we're aiming for the value of the current state to be is so it's the value predicted by our network, but that network is parameterized by by by, uh, by the old parameters from doing the rollout, not from new parameters while we're learning. And the policy we were following for this AT was the pi old, not the, certainly not the pi because we don't because we didn't have the pi until we start until we started the training bit. So this AT has nothing to do with pi or theta. It's only created by the pi old, by the old policy, by the old value network. So it's just a constant too. So we can just put this nabla inside and just apply it directly to this pi. So let's do that. I'm just going to copy and paste that in. And then we're just going to move this nabla inside. So that is going to go into here like so. Cool. Right now, you're, you like me are used to seeing this as a ratio of pi to pi old, right? So we need to use the log derogative trick here, uh, which you've probably seen before, but I'm just going to go through it anyway. Uh, log derivative trick. Uh, so the log derivative trick, so if we take the derivative of like f theta, like a function of theta, uh, oh, sorry, of log theta, here the log is the, the natural log, all my logs are natural logs. Um, like this is this, right? Uh, okay, this is equal to the derivative of f theta divided by f theta. So divide that by f theta. All right. The derivative of the log, well, yeah, yeah. The derivative of the log of, of f theta is the derivative of f theta divided by f theta. Now we can rearrange this slightly. I mean, sometimes we don't need to, but sometimes we do. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the we're going to put the nabla f theta on the left. Uh, we're going to put the nabla theta log f on the right. We're going to get rid of the frac, stick the f theta here, and hopefully that's all going to pop out. All right, so the derivative of f theta is equal to the derivative of log f theta times f theta, right? We just rearranged this. We just stuck the f theta on here, and then we flipped the sides. All right, now in here, in this derivative of the objective function for the PPO, We've got the derivative of the pi, and so that's like this, right? Derivative of the f theta. So we can replace the derivative of the pi with the derivative of log pi multiplied by pi. So then that's going to give us our ratio of pi over power. So let's just do that. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that in here. So basically, what we're going to do, right? So this this nabla is going to be nabla of the log and we're going to multiply that by the pi All right so we're left with that and then we could rearrange slightly by putting the nabla outside of the frag like that that's kind of what we're used to seeing right now if pi equal pi old then this just goes to one and we're left with like the nabla log pi advantage, which is exactly the gradient of the ATC of the like if we took well it's what they were trying to write here is the vegetation of the gradient, right? So this should be gradient of the of, uh, objective of ATC. Cool. Alright, so I thought it was interesting that actually even though they kind of look different with all these ratios and stuff they do actually come out to be the same. All right, now they go further than that. They actually show it's the same for, uh, they use uh, stable baselines, right? And they show that it's the same, which is really cool. 
Right, so what they do is they run this program, which is simply running A2C with stable baselines. Uh, they're running it with cart poll with an MLP policy, C this one, and they're running it for 3000 time steps. After running it for 3000 time steps, on the next line or set of lines, they're printing out the parameters of the policy. Okay, so this is pretty short and simple. And I, I copied this into Visual Studio uh, somewhere here. Yeah, I copied this into Visual Studio so we can run that. And they also will run that in a sec. And they did the same thing for PPO. So they're taking PPO, also using Carpole, also using MLB policy, also having 3 is one Right now, here we can see all of the differences between PPO and A2C. If you apply all these differences, the result is A2C, and they show that this is the case by running this. Right, so one difference is it's not using the same optimizer. The PPO, I guess, is using Adam. Anyway, the A2C is using RMS prop, which is actually my favorite RL optimizer. It's fairly stable sometimes, even when Adam isn't. Um, and then they are giving these like parameters for the optimizer. So that's one difference. And this isn't really anything to do with PPO or ATC, this is just, so there's like PPO, the algorithm, and then there's PPO, the implementation by OpenAI. So PPO is implemented by OpenAI as PPO. There's like two versions of PPO, there's PPO and PPO2, and Stable Base Alliance 3 copied the OpenAI PPO2. So that's, this is all the same implementation and like all of their results are using this particular implementation. And then there's the implementation of A2C, which I think comes from the Manier paper from 2016 or so. Um, and it, they use different parameters, right? So one of the differences is that they're not using the same optimizer. Another difference is the learning rate is different. Another difference is, so in PPO, the end steps by default is 2048. In A2C, the end steps is five, it's much shorter. Uh, I, I imagine that's because they're not doing this whole like off policy thing. Um, I haven't talked about the off policy really. Why well, I sort of have. Um, I can go into more detail on the off policy. But anyway, let's run through this program. Um, generalized advantage function. So uh, disabling the generalized advantage function. So generalized advantage function is cool. But that's not really the PPO algorithm. That's like a cool thing that is useful that is being used by the, in this PPO implementation. Could be used, doesn't have to be used. Set it to one, we disable it. N epochs is one. Yes, yeah, so PPO, you do tend to do several epochs, but you don't have to. You can set it to one. So the 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 uh, title of this paper is the A to C is a special case of PPO. So yes, if we set the n steps is five, the n epoch is equal one, we're going to get the ATC algorithm. Um, batch size is five, right? So this is not like a hyperparameter that's part of ATC or PPO. But what this is, is the batch size has to match the n steps, right? Because the ATC does one giant batch over the entire rollout buffer. Here, the rollout buffer is five steps because the n steps is five. Batch size has to be five. If this doesn't match, we're not going to get the A2C. Normalized advantage equal false. So yeah, again, like normalizing advantage, that's another like cool thing you can do, trick, whatever you want to call it. The PPO implementation does it. The A2C does not. Uh, clip range VF. All right, so the PPO implementation is also using clipping on the value function. We're not going to do that. Right now, just as before, uh, it learns for 3,000 steps. Here we've got 3,000 steps, and then it dumps the parameters. And then here they've got a printout of the parameters in both cases. And we're going to run this and we're going to exactly the same parameters actually. Um, so let's run that because I think it's kind of cool and fun. All right, so we're here we've got the PPO. Uh, so we've got the same basic copy and paste data and we've got the ATC. The only thing I've changed is that uh, like they're printing out like one parameter per line. I mean, we can do that. Let's do that once so that we see what it prints. All right, so this is the A2C. So we'll run the A2C. Um, right, so that's this. Um, wait, how many steps am I running? All right, so we should be running it. 
three thousand, right? Right, and we can see that this matches what's in the paper: three point nine two eight nine and three point nine two eight nine zero point four one two eight zero. So, like with the same seed, we get exactly the same thing, right? Uh, so they're printing out like the sum of each of these weights one per line, because uh, I want to be able to show the ATC and the PPO on the same screen with the large like YouTube friendly font. Let's just squish it onto one line. So basically, instead of printing them on separate lines. I'm simply printing them on the same line. Okay, but you can see this is the same value: two point nine two eight nine, zero point four one two eight, two point two, etc., etc., etc. Okay, cool. And then I did the same thing for the PPI. So basically, instead of printing out on per line, I'm like printing out on a single line. Right, and then we can run both of those. Bam, and we get exactly the same parameters. So that's that's pretty cool, right? Because like they haven't even had to hack with the stable baselines. All they've done is cast in some hyperparameters. So that, that's cool for stable baselines three that it's so easy to configure, like change the optimizer or whatever in so few lines. Yeah, so nice work, stable baselines three. So yeah, so basically with just these hyperparameter change, this gives exactly the same result as ATC. Now, if we change any of these, that won't be true. Like if I change the batch size or if I change the end steps, um, that's no longer, going to, no longer going to be true. Something that's interesting, if we look at the, right, so that's, I mean, that's the paper, basically. It's kind of a cool paper. I mean, it's not very long, but yeah. I, I imagine it'll get longer. Uh, so I, I thought it was interesting because, um, like, I, from that paper, I basically learned about what's happening here. I learned what is this mysterious pi theta old. Like, okay, so this pi theta old is because running all these mini batches and after the first mini batch our theta has changed and doesn't match the rollout so that's why we've got it and we're doing the um off policy learning um there's two other things i think are interesting um so one thing if we go into the ppo code so they've got that like, this is where they're calculating the the uh, the policy loss Right, so they're taking the log prob, which is from pi theta, and they're taking the old log prob, which is from pi old from doing the rollout, and they're subtracting them. Now, if this is equal to this, it's going to equal zero, right? And yet there is a gradient. Like we can check there's a gradient. I mean, I checked that there's a gradient. Right, so let's check our HP hacking. And what this is going to do is add in a whole bunch of code here. So this is the PPO code that I've hacked around. Right, yeah, there's no no, no me. That's kind of what I thought. All right, so this is correct, right? The th dot x log prob minus old log prob, uh, calling it ratio, blah 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 blah. Right now, if I do this code, right, what this is going to do is it's going to do policy loss dot backward, and then it's going to see what things have a gradient. It's going to print the gradient. So basically, this code is kind of the code from that paper, but like instead of looking at the parameters, I'm looking for the gradient, and then I'm immediately exiting. I think I'm going to print an exit exiting. Like normally, I just crash because then I get a stack trace, but because it takes a load of space, I'm actually using a sys to exit for a change. But I kind of want to leave some messaging. Message. Um, okay, so if we run this with the PPO one, it's going to print out the gradients. And it's going to do that immediately, like on the, I mean, we can print the ratio, right? I mean, we are printing the ratio. So let's run the PPO one. All right, so we run the PPO one. Right, this is the gradient. We have a gradient, right? And where is the ratio? Right, the ratio is one. Oh, why is it one? It's because we're doing the X, right? So this comes to zero 
Then we're doing the axe, which takes it back to one. And then we're doing all the clipping and stuff. And then we're doing um, policy loss dot backward. And that has a gradient, even though, <clears throat> even though this became zero, which is kind of interesting. I mean, it's a little bit like when you do like stop grad in um, Gumbel. Yeah, just because this comes to zero doesn't mean it has no gradient. Also, something that's interesting is this loss is not equal to the loss with the ATC. Right, so if I go to the ATC and I also hacked around a lot. So here we can print the policy loss. And here we can print the policy loss. Right, so PPO printing the policy loss is minus two four one nine minus two point nine four one six. The gradient, the first gradient is zero point zero zero one five and then zero point zero two eight seven with the minus. Now let's run the A two C. The policy loss is two point zero three nine four. Now what was the previous one? Two point nine four one six. It's not even the same sign. This is minus two point nine four one six. This is plus 2.0394, but the gradients, the gradients are identical, which is pretty interesting, right? Right, so the, um, the calculation for these two policies is different. Like this one's taking the exponential, for example. So the PPO one is taking the exponential up here. The ATC one is not, and yet the gradients are identical, which is I don't know, I thought that was interesting. Uh, all right, so that was the first other thing I thought was interesting. Uh, off policy. Mm, is this a topic for this video? Or is this a topic for a different video? Yeah, I think that's a topic for a different video. Cool. All right, so... Yeah, so we've looked at this paper. ATC is a special case of FPO. Yes, it is. Right? By just simply changing the hyperparameter of the PPO, we can reproduce the ATC, like exactly, like to as many decimal places as we look. I mean, we only looked at four decimal places, but it seems reasonable to suppose that. I mean, that was after 3,000 steps. If there was any differences at all after 3,000 steps, those would be very, very different. Uh, so uh, we looked at how the objective for PPO looks different from the, well, this is the incorrect objective for ATC, right? We looked at what the correct objective for ATC was, where it would be basically... Well, yeah, this, right? So they, they kind of look different because of this ratio. Um, they look quite different after taking the derivative, uh, but when you substitute the pi equal the pi odd, then they become the same. Um, I can't, yeah. And then we looked at why do we have the pi odd? It's because, um, so we're training on this rollout buffer and when we're doing the training, we're doing lots and lots of mini batches and epochs, and only the first mini batch of the first epoch has the theta equal to the theta that we were using during the rollout. All of the other ones are using off quality learning. Cool. I thought that was interesting. I hope you did. Uh, let me know in the comments what you found interesting, uh, what you want more of. Um, yeah, cool. All right. Awesome. If you got this far, thank you very much. See you.